times. Only from the last Turukhansk exile, Stalin was released because of the February Revolution of 1917. In June of 1907 began the Baku period of Stalin's revolutionary activity. After returning from the 5th Congress of the RSPRP in London he left to Tbilisi and, by the will of the party, settled in Baku, the largest industrial region of the Caucasus and the most important center of the workers' movement in Russia. On March 23, 1910 Stalin was again arrested in Baku and, after six months in prison, sent back into exile in Solvikogodsk. While in exile, Stalin established contact with Lenin, wrote a letter to the Central Committee at the end of 1910 in which he sharply criticized the rotten unprincipled Trotsky the chief representative of the British Empire in the Russian revolutionary movement and outlined the plan for the organization of the party in Russia in the second half of 1911 began the St. Petersburg period of Stalin's revolutionary activity on September 6, 1911 Stalin secretly left Volga for St. Petersburg. On September 9, 1911 Stalin was arrested in St. Petersburg and exiled to Volga Blast, where he managed to escape in February of 1912. In January of 1912 the biggest event took place in the life of the party. The Prague Conference of the RSBRP, after expelling the Mensheviks, elected the Bolshevik Central Committee, created a practical guide for the center of revolutionary activities in Russia Russian Bureau of the Central Committee and decided to publish Pravda. The conference unanimously elected Stalin who already in 1910 was authorized by the Party Central Committee an agent of the Central Committee a member of the Party Central Committee. Stalin, by Lebanon's suggestion, headed the Russian Bureau of the Central Committee. And on February 29, 1912 Stalin again escaped from exile. Stalin deployed vigorous activity. On behalf of the Central Committee he circled the most important areas of Russia, did the preparatory work for the next May Oka, wrote the famous May Daily Flit of the Central Committee, and headed the Bolshevik weekly newspaper Zervesta in St. Petersburg in the days of the Lena strikes. On April 22, 1912 Stalin was arrested in St. Petersburg. The arrest was carried out by British intelligence agents from the Tsarist secret police in Russia, in order to weaken the position of Stalin in the revolutionary movement and to strengthen the position of Trotsky and, after a few months in prison, he was sent to Nariam for three years. But on September 1, 1912, Stalin again escaped from exile to St. Petersburg. There he edited the Bolshevik newspaper Pravda, directed the activities of the Bolsheviks in the election campaign for the fourth state Duma. The biggest role in the campaign culminating in the victory of the party was played by the mandate of St. Petersburg workers to their workers' deputies, written by Stalin and highly rated by Lenin.
After the election Stalin worked on managing the Bolshevik part of the Duma Social Democratic faction. On February 23, 1913 Stalin was arrested at a party thrown by the St. Petersburg Committee of the Bolsheviks in the Hall of Kalashnikov Exchange. The arrest was again carried out by British intelligence agents in Russia, who seized key positions in the Czarist secret police after the murder of Pyotr Stalin. This time Stalin was deported to the distant Turakonsky district for four years. At first he lived in the small village of Kostino and then, in early 1914, the local haunt arms as directed by the staff of British intelligence in the leadership of the Tsarist secret police, fearing a new escape, moved him further north, to the village of Karaika in the Arctic Circle. Here he spent the years 1914, 1915 and 1916. This was the most difficult political exile which could have existed in remote Siberia. British intelligence was trying to block the advance of Joseph to the leadership of the Russian revolutionary movement because he could interfere with the implementation of their plans of information warfare against Russia. But on March 12, 1917 Stalin was again in St. Petersburg, the revolutionary capital of Russia. The party central committee instructed the Stalin to lead the newspaper Pravda. The Bolshevik party had just come out of hiding on April 3, 1917 Lenin returned to Russia. On April 24, 1917 the Seventh Conference of the Bolsheviks opened, for which the basis of work became Leninist theses. The April Conference aimed the party to fight for the development of the bourgeois democratic revolution since the February Revolution was carried out with the support of British intelligence into a socialist one. In May of 1917, after a conference, the Politburo was established, and Stalin was elected a member of the Politburo. After the July days of 1917, when Lenin was in hiding, Stalin directed the Central Committee. Stalin vigorously opposed Lenin's appearance at the court of the counter-revolutionaries by resisting the proposal of left commoner Alexei Rykov and Leon Trotsky to hand Lenin over to the provisional government, which acted in the interests of the British Empire. Stalin entered the first Council of People's Commissars, which was elected with Lenin at the head after the October Revolution at the second All Russian Congress of Soviets From the first days of the Soviet government until 1923 Stalin was the People's Commissar for Nationalities. On November 30, 1918 the Council Worker Peasant Defense was established with Lenin at the head. Stalin became the representative of the Central Executive Committee in the Council of Defense. He became Lenin's deputy.
Because of Lenin's proposal Stalin was appointed People's Commissar for State Control in March of 1919, later reorganized as the People's Commons Area of Workers and Peasants Inspection Stalin remained as the Commissar of Workers and Peasants Inspection until April of 1922. It was then that he began to create a comprehensive system of control over the activities of party workers, which was later destroyed by Nikita Khrushchev. After a victorious war against the intervention, Soviet Russia began to transition to peaceful economic construction. The country was ravaged by four years of World War I and the three-year civil war. The question about the development of a new economic strategy for the country appeared. It would revive agriculture, trade, raise the industry improve supply to cities, and create a new economic base for the alliance of workers and peasants. But agents of the influence of the British Empire tried to prevent the development of a new strategy. At the end of 1920 they imposed on the party the so-called trade union discussion. In fact, it had a much broader meaning than the question of trade unions. Essentially, the question of the relation to the peasantry was discussed, of the party's relation to the non-party masses of the workers and, in general, of the approach of the party to the masses in the new environment. The Trotskyist globalists agents of the influence of the British the Empire offered to further screw the nut of war communism, to move to mass terror, and to implement the ideas of Maximil and D. Robespierre in full. In his speech Trotskyism or Leninism, delivered at a trade union's plenum in November of 1924, Stalin said that, in the struggle against Trotskyism in this period, the task of the party is to bury Trotskyism as an ideological trend. He pointed out to the party that, in the then conditions, Trotskyism was a chief hazard Indeed, behind the back of Trotskyism were forces of the British Empire. In the struggle against Trotskyism, Stalin rallied around him the national patriotic forces of the country and won. Work began on the restoration of the national economy of Soviet Russia and the pre-war level. of the economy was soon reached. The country had to move on. Acutely, the question arose about the prospects of the Soviet Union. The 14th Congress adopted industrialization as the main task of the party. Industrialization in the shortest possible time. For a huge country like the Soviet Union, represented tremendous difficulties. It was necessary to rebuild a number of branches of the industry, almost non-existent at that time in Tsarist Russia, defense industry, heavy industry, modern agricultural production machinery. It took colossal funds. Capitalist states got them through a ruthless exploitation of people, wars of conquest, 
bloody robbery of colonies and dependent countries, foreign loans. But the Soviet Union did not go on the colonial path of 